So dudes, I'm G and this is my gaming experience. This is the attacker tier list, my unofficial attacker tier list for Deadly Omen that's gonna coincide today with the new season launch and obviously Deimos as a new playable character. You may notice the name change for the channel and it's just something to align with my identity a lot closer. I know people <laughs> don't really wanna hear about it, but a lot of people I noticed in the comments in the last video were asking about it. So for those who were curious, that's why. I'm not an idiot, <laughs> right? I'm not stupid. I know how people are going to react uh, given certain developments and I'm not going to change people's minds. But for everybody who is approaching it in good faith, that's why you hear the different voice that's <clears throat> speaking of which, uh, which is difficult to maintain for an extended period of time right now, but we're getting better at it. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take it one day at a time, and... yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here's the video. Once again, this video is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps.com is a service that helps men deal with male pattern baldness. The name of the game is Convenience, and you can do everything from the comfort of your computer desk. Everything is uniquely tailored to your specific needs, so it's not necessarily, like, hair loss medication, you can also get volumizing shampoos and conditioners to keep the hair you have on your head looking pretty. I woke up this way. Keeps is all about personalization. They'll get you on a call with somebody who will give you a personalized treatment plan. Keeps is discreet too, and you can get your treatments in non-branded packaging. It's affordable too, typically half the cost of traditional pharmacy prices. So it's affordable, it's convenient, and it works. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get a special offer, Go to keeps.com slash Gregor or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Gregor. And thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Okay, so as you can tell, I have it in release order. So we're going to start with vanilla and then we're going to work our way up towards Deimos. So let's do it. All right, first off, Thermite. So Thermite, pretty basic hard breacher. I don't think anybody really needs to hear anything too crazy about this guy. You've probably heard everything that you could say about him. Big key thing that differentiates him from other hard breachers, he has to walk up to the thing, then hit the charge from a distance, right, with a remote activated uh, doohickey, right, the little, the little clicky thing. So he has to place it on the wall. That puts him at a little bit more risk, so it's not perfect. However, because it destroys so much stuff, and it destroys it so quickly, he's basically your main hard breacher on a number of exterior walls. So that's Clubhouse CC, that's uh, Clubhouse Jacuzzi, walls like that where they're, on the, where they're on the side of the building, and you don't have to worry about getting run out on or C4'd most of the time. And his guns are pretty solid too. Standard hard breacher, I don't need to harp on this point too much. Keep going down the list, Ash. Ash is one of the premier entry fraggers. Three speed. Great guns. You can you can use any of these guns now, right? Any of the attackers with a magnified ACOG scope if you want. I personally like the R4C over the G36. I think that it has more upside, especially since there's no scope, uh, scope differential anymore. As it stands, she's just a great entry frag, right? She has great guns, great mobility, and her gadget. You can use that to get rid of an, uh, an occasional... Deployable shield, bulletproof camera, whatever crap that you run into along the way, barbed wire on the staircase. She just has every tool that you need in order to flesh out that team comp. And there's really rarely a situation where Ash is going to be a hindrance to the team. I can't really think of any, but the reason that she's not up here is because she's not like borderline OP. She's just a really solid character that fits into pretty much any team composition. Let's go to Twitch. You're starting to see a pattern here. There's really not a lot of situations with the vanilla operators where it's like, oh, these guys stink. Because they really fleshed out a lot of the core mechanics of the game when they first dropped. Twitch is really nice to deal with Valkyrie. She is a very, very good Valkyrie counter, especially when you combo her with an IQ. And the fact that you can shoot the laser drones from a distance, you can shoot them from as far as you want because of the infinite range and the perfect accuracy. She can deal with cameras. She can completely deny information on an entire other end of the building, for instance, right? And then make things a lot more easy for you to actually get in a little bit undetected, maybe to mitigate some of the information game 
from the defense. Not to mention, the 417 is the best DMR in the game. So she has good utility punch, and she has really good weapons. Montang, along with the rest of the shield operators, are a lot more viable than they used to be. Monty was always really good, but shields in general were kind of a one-trick situation. Not necessarily in a bad way, right? They had their place. Um, but when we're looking at it from a competitive point of view, I think that all the shields in general are just a lot, uh, a lot better than they used to be. I'm not going to put Monty too high quite yet. I, I do want to keep my eye on him to see, you know, where he can end up. The actual, like, individual gameplay loop, right? The actual strategic aspect of why you bring the character hasn't changed that much. But the effectiveness of it might be a little bit different. So I am going to keep an eye on Monty to see, but I'd put him at like borderline in between A and B. He's still a solid map control character, really good on quarters and staircases where you just want to get that by any means possible. Blitz is also just, it, Blitz is so good now um, compared to how he used to be. I, I can't imagine that we've gone from year one to year nine with Blitz. I mean, the guy has gotten a huge glow up. His survivability, just by being able to sprint with a shield up, was already really nice. But now that now that you can reload without having to expose yourself, now that you have all these different mix-up options, right? You have the shield bash that keeps you relatively concealed while you do the bash, stuff like that. The free look, the quality of life with the shields in general. He's going to leverage that position a lot more, and I think you're going to get much more effective rounds off the board with him. Uh, just because... The, survive the survivability aspect really goes a long way in terms of keeping yourself safe with the animations, right? Like the reloading, the sprinting, being able to get that flash off, being able to get up close uh, without putting your, putting your hitbox at risk is really going to help you a lot. And that was really always Blitz's biggest issue. IQ, I'm also putting at beats here. A lot of people would put her lower. You'll actually find IQ pretty often in a competitive environment just because of the fast utility clearing kind of necessity, or I, sh I shouldn't say utility clearing, but more like info clearing kind of attack setups that we have going on right now. IQ is really important for those. Like I said, she combos up with Twitch really well. And as it stands, she's one of the only like really dedicated Solus counters. She she's like the only option we really have. Um, she also has frag grenades relatively recently, which are nice to deal with occasional um, defender gadgetry, bulletproof gadgetry. And her guns are really good. Plus she's a three speed. So she fills out the cracks in a lot of different compositions, even if she's not a mainstay pick. That ability to hard counter Valkyrie in combination with the Twitch, in my opinion, makes her really strong. She can also give you a read of what the defense is doing, and then you can adjust from there. Pull out the scanner. The scanner range is so freaking big that you can pretty much see exactly how the defense is going to be positioned. Not exactly, but you know, pretty decent idea of how they're going to be positioned, what angles are going to be holding, what map control they want to keep. And then you can adjust around that. So she's good tactically and strategically. And she she does, uh, she does a number of different things at once pretty effectively. We got Fuse up next. And, you know, he got the shield buff. And this is my first C-tier character. Uh, as, as is usually the case with these tier lists, right? People tend to look at these and, uh, and think of them as like, well, my favorite character is, you know, towards the bottom of the list, which means they're bad. I'm of the opinion that there's very few, quote-unquote, bad operators in Rainbow Six Siege, if you want to even call them that. Every operator has a situation, I think, in which they can shine. But the issue with Fuse is that he's just not very efficient when it comes to the utility destruction. Uh, right now, there's just a lot of options that can do a much more clean-up kind of job, especially in terms of verticality, right? You can bring a ram... For that kind of niche situation, you can bring a buck, you can bring a sledge. If you're trying to blow up a bunch of utility on the ground floor below, usually you can just combo up with vertical and nades pretty effectively, right? It's very rare where you're going to have a situation where you need that much utility destruction. That being said, there are some pocket strats where you can throw a fuse into the mix and then mix things up a little bit. But his uh, his three armor rating, you know, he, he's slow on attack, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And yeah, he has the AK-12, but then... You know, what What are you getting out of it, right? I do think that it is interesting and in ranked how you can kind of combo up the fuse charge on hard walls to kind of make sure the band tricking situation isn't as much of an issue. Uh, you can also fuse charge through reinforced hatches, which is nice. That's kind of nice for the chalet uh, clubhouse 
I'm sorry, the the chalet, yeah, chalet clubhouse, <laughs> the chalet basement hit uh, with that connector hatch is really nice. That's a really good site to bring him on. But yeah, he's just kind of, eh. There are other operators that kind of do his job just a little bit better than him, and that's the only reason that he's here. But he's still a fun ranked operator. Kind of the same deal with Glass. I mean, like, the guy has smokes. He has, well, he, you can bring frags if you want. You, you can bring a Gon 6 if you want. And yeah, you can, you can shoot through smoke. Um, but there's, there's very rarely a situation now where the attack does not get something. Uh, there's very rarely a situation right now where you can just sit in the back and then just wait for the defense to, like, peek you. That's not really going to happen anymore, right? Like, as the attack in Rainbow Six right now, because of the way the game is being played, uh, if you're sitting around an attack and you're just kind of holding angles, you're probably not getting a whole lot done. And there are some situations, right? Like, like I said, prefacing the whole thing, there are some situations where Glass can work, given the right circumstances, but he's just not a mainstay pick. And so I can't put him much higher. However, for the sites that he works on, I mean, you can use your head a little bit, right? Throw a smoke, cover the cross, cover the plant. In a defensive kind of posture, when the plant's down, Glass is really nice to have. And so you shouldn't just write him off completely because of, uh, you know, the fact that he doesn't work in 100% of the strategies. But he is a sniper character, and he is kind of pigeonholed to that role. Next up, we got Sledge. Uh, Sledge is kind of taking a hit recently. Sledge is, uh, you know, not necessarily taking a hit in terms of the uh, game balancing, but people are just kind of finding out that Buck is really, really freaking good. Uh, Buck can kind of do a little bit more than Sledge, right, in, in certain circumstances, just because he's a lot quicker than Sledge. And I do like Sledge for the L85. Like, that's certainly, uh, that's certainly a reason to bring him. I do like the frag grenades. But also, at the same time, you got to remember the frag grenades aren't as powerful as they used to be, right? Because you don't have the, uh, the cooking capability. So you can't do the depth charging anymore. And you can't really do the whole, um, you know, th there's, you can't do as intricate sort of takes, right? You can't cook the nade, throw it around a corner, and then get rid of the shield, right, with a, with a particularly placed kind of nade. As soon as you bounce a nade, someone's going to be able to run off of that position. And that does kind of limit, you know, entry fragging capabilities to a certain extent, as much as people don't really like that. So for those reasons and more, you know, the fact that he's a, he's a three armor as well, he's slow, it's, it's tough to make adjustments. He's not a bad character. His vertical game is still really strong. And I think that's always going to keep him relatively high, right? It's not going to, he's never going to go down here, right? He's never going to go below B tier. But because of a lot of the things that are kind of working against him compared to Buck, I can't place him much higher than Buck. All right, next up, we got Thatcher in A tier. Uh, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we need to, uh, we don't need to talk too much about this. If you've been playing the game for more than five minutes, you know how good Thatcher is. Uh, he can throw an EMP at the wall, and then, you know, you're just pretty much guaranteed to get it open under most circumstances. Not to mention there, there are some situations where you can leverage the EMP grenades to also just kind of deal with any kind of haphazard sort of gadgetry that you find on the bomb site that you're not necessarily aware of. If you get the wall open, maybe you don't even need the EMPs to get the wall. You can throw a couple of EMPs just kind of willy-nilly into the site, and then you can get stuff like Jaeger ADSs, Fenrir Mines, whatever. Stuff that you didn't even already know about. Uh, not to mention, his guns are also quite good. You know, he gets the L85, obviously, one of the best assault rifles, and you also have the AR-33. That's an option for you. Um, but yeah, he's... The fact is just really good. Blow up as many gadgets as you want in a given radius. That's never not going to be powerful in Siege. All right, next up, Buck, and you'll see that Buck is a little bit higher than Sledge. So, what can Buck do? So, Buck can go below, right, with the verticality, which is good, and he can go above. He can also go to the side. He can do all of this a little bit more efficiently than Sledge can, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, with a little bit more ammo, at least in terms of, like, you know, 30 seconds of vertical work, I'm pretty sure Buck can cover more ground. Like, Sledge can get more over the course of, like, a longer period of time because he gets 25 swings before his arms get too tired. Um, but in a short amount of time, right, like, if you're, if you're getting the main vertical for your team, like, let's say you're doing a consulate garage hit and you're going to, you know, you're going to cut off, um, you know, where sandwich used to be, yellow pillar, the kitchen rotate. Buck can, can do this, like, so much more quickly and with more you know, vertical opening uh, than Sledge in that, like, short time frame of maybe, like, 10 seconds. Uh, his gun is really good. The C8 is really good. He has a Gon 6. Like, 
and he has can openers. So he has so many different things. He he's a very Swiss Army Man kind of character right now, and it's just it's tough to to call him bad. Like the only reason that I'm not putting him at S tier is because you know he doesn't have like a, like a super OP gun or something like that, right? Like you kind of have to pull down on the gun a little bit. It does have a tiny bit more recoil, I think, compared to its competition for the damage output it puts out, but it's still, you know, the, the, the C8 is just a really nice primary. Uh, Buck's great right now. Uh, Blackbeard, you know, th this guy is just in a tier of his own. Very, very rarely is there ever a position where I'm like, oh, hey, you know, we could really use a Blackbeard. I guess, you, like, you can bring him on, like, Bank Repel if you wanted cheese. Like, he's great for cheese strats, and you're gonna have that one round you lose, where you, like, you swing, and then you don't expect a Blackbeard, and you shoot him in the head, and then you just, you just get fried. And that, you know, that makes you want to, like, smash your keyboard in half. But for the most part, he's just, like, no. Um, I do believe he is a part of the big rework that's coming towards the end of year nine, just based off of the inferences that, um, the, the UB guys said in that particular roadmap video not too long ago. Capital was another uh, Swiss man army-like kind of character. A couple of things kind of have to go right for him to work. I, I am not, I'm not going to put him up a little bit just because I think he's not quite as self-sufficient as these other characters. I don't think you can really like solo queue with him as effectively just because you kind of have to coordinate certain things and make sure that, you know, certain things are have their uh, their ducks in a row. Uh, but my favorite thing to bring Capital for is just the clubhouse rafters where you're usually gonna have to deal uh, with that really powerful position there on, on the like R90 and also the window itself. So cutting off those positions allows your team to get into the garage much more much more quickly. You can can open her in the back, which is much more which is much safer. That just completely opens up that part of the building in a way that other operators can't really do. You fire off of the ceiling, and then you can also smoke to cover the plant for the execute. He's a three-speed. His guns are good. Um, he's just a very utility-based kind of character. And if you know what you're doing, if you know the, you know, if you have good tax shooter fundamentals, if you have good comp shooter fundamentals, right, I think you can get a lot out of the fact that you have fire and you have smoke all in one character, right? You have, you know, you have all the, the counter-strike nades. You have molly, smoke, and you have a good gun. So have fun. All right, Habana. So I actually put her, I believe I put her at B tier last time just because she wasn't getting as much play. Now you're starting to see, you know, you want these like really aggressive kind of timed hits on attack, especially in a competitive environment. Uh, if I remember correctly, looking at the invite pick chart, Habana actually had more picks than Thermite. And Habana is still the hatch queen. So for bank basement, right, there's four hatches on that freaking site. Bringing a Habana completely opens up the way that you approach that. Because now you have an alternate take, right? You have an alternate take through the front hatches that you didn't have before. So you can open up, you can open up the lobby hatch, you can open up the elevator hatch, and then if the site hit for for red side isn't working out, server side, then you have something else. Or you can just pivot to that from the start. So that mix-up capability, that ability to hit wherever you want, whenever you want, just completely changes the actual strategic decision making for your team within a given round. And that's why Habana still gets banned, uh, especially on hatch-heavy maps. Not to mention, she's also just a good supplementary hard breach pick if you do need that. And the gun is pretty solid, right? The Type 89, I give it a lot of crap for the low magazine size. I still do. But it's good for what it is. Jackal is in a weird situation. Uh, I am kind of giving him a little bit of a ranked buff here. If you're talking about him in competitive the coordination that those guys are on is just a completely different level. And so you don't really need like the free, you know, the free feet picks kind of thing. You don't really need the, uh, the feet scanny kind of thing just because you're, you're going to have so many different components of the drone game and of people getting into positions where they need to be and pinching, uh, that Jackal is just kind of redundant, but just for the sake of, you know, just for the ranked argument, right? Because this tier list is doing something just a little bit different than I usually do where I'm kind of calculating competitive and ranked at the same time dude the c7 is a really good gun like the fact that that thing has an acog now is is a massive game changer and i've been getting i've been getting a lot of leverage out of that so jackal has a has a secondary shotgun and he's great for the roam clear and if you combo him up with a deimos if you combo him up with a lion or a doke then he can be kind of like a like a flex entry 
hybrid, right? He can be the secondary entry frag for your entry going into the building, double up, play for the refrag, really solid ranked operator, just not so good in comp. So for that, you know, he's kind of middle of the pack. All right, next up is Ying. Y you guys know how it is. She's been getting banned in competitive so freaking much because you have to, right? If you don't ban Ying, then you're going to have to deal with her later or you're going to have to bring in Warden. Uh, four super duper flashbangs that you just, you throw them and then you can get whatever freaking control you want in the map pretty much instantly. Like there's no, there's not really a lot of counterplay, right? If you just get, if you get flashed, you're like super, super screwed. Uh, not to mention her gun is really good too. That LMG is super slept on. I think the only reason that people don't talk about it Sorry, big big breakfast, and I'm, I'm doing this all in one take. Um, I think the only reason that not as many people talk about Ying's gun is because, you know, in a, in a ranked environment, she is kind of, I wouldn't say difficult to play, but there is, like, there is, like, kind of a certain elo bracket where you get around, like, I guess silver, gold, where people, like, still don't really get, like, why she's powerful quite yet. Um, because the coordination game, right, the timing game, it, it, it sound, I sound like a jerk, right, when I point it out, but, like, not a lot of people, like, get the, you know, the speediness that you kind of need in order to capitalize on a flashbang. They just kind of throw it, and they sit out the window, and they're like, hmm, right? So, people who understand that Ying is really good are going to take advantage of the fact that that gun has, like, a million bullets in it, and you can just, you can just mouse one everywhere. The only reason more people don't talk about it is because it's on a character that has, you know, not a super crazy skill floor, but, like, one in and of itself... Um, that gates that gate keeps her just a just a little bit and it's also kind of slow fire right um, but ying is just she has so much going for her she fits into pretty much any team comp right now if you want map control you can bring a monty you can bring a ying you just get super aggressive on what you want to go you throw the crap for the window bada bing bada boom like she's just she's really good i, I don't know if they're gonna like take away a candela or or something um, but she's been really powerful for really long, and I think the only reason that people aren't talking about her is because Solus, Azami, Fenrir, right? That's that's been the talk of the town. So, okay, Sophia, I I, I have to do it to my home girl. I can't put her much higher than B tier. If she was a two armor, maybe I'd put her up at A tier. Um, but she's so freaking like her gadget is great. Okay, I love the lifeline. So compared to Ash, I do like the ability to have a little bit more. Um, quickness on the destruction, right? Zof, I love to bring to deal with um, site setup. So if there are footholds and people are trying to hold that for a long angle from a distance that I can't really, you know, peek effectively because I'm going to get shot in the feet, Zofia counters those feet hole setups. She can also make it, a, you know, a lot more difficult to safely peek head level holes. Anytime I see an angle where I think people are just going to be trying to like constantly quick pick me off of if I can't if I if I have no choice but to take it I'm going to zof charge it. And that's really nice to have. I'm going to zof charge it. I'm going to use the stun to see if somebody's there. If somebody's there, then I'm going to get aggressive and I'm going to go for the pick. Um really really self-sufficient entry fragger, but she's so slow and she's so loud and the gun is good, but again she's slow and loud. And that's kind of the uh, that's what makes her kind of a pain in the butt to use in competitive just because you need that speediness, you need that ability to react. Um but in ranked she's an awesome ranked operator. I love playing Zof in ranked. Um I'll bring Zof for for ranked. You know, what the heck? Like we ball, dude. Like I'll I'll bring it for your armored entry frag. I don't give a crap. But I understand why in competitive it's a little bit more difficult to justify that. Next up to Kebby, um, you know, or, or Dokabi. I don't know, dude. I forgot how to say her name a long time ago. Here's the thing, guys, okay? Uh, she, I, I do want to call her overpowered, but I know the moment that I do that, Ubisoft is gonna, like, slam her over the head with a cricket bat, right? With the nerf bat. Um, and I, and I don't want them to do that to her. She will probably lose some of the utility game. The big thing with Doke is that she has guaranteed value in the roam clear, which is big, right? The only way that you're not going to get to Kebby called is if you're in the radius of a mute jammer. And usually people aren't going to set up mute jammers for, for like a roam coverage. That's, that's not like if somebody manages to do that and they pull it off more power to them. All right. Like they're, they're the goat 500 IQ chess strategist, but when it comes to Dekebi, right, you, you do the phone call, and then if somebody's close, like, you're just going to hear them, right? There's no, there's no lead up to it. There's no anticipation. There's no telegraph. She calls, and then you make a sound cue. 
So that's guaranteed value that's big and, it, and it's global, right? It works globally. It'll work anywhere the roamer is. So just super, super big information gatherer makes that whole roam clear that the attack needs much more efficient, a million times more efficient. Her gun is super good, right? The DM, I know people don't like DMRs, but now people are kind of starting to wake up to how good they are in the past couple of years. Um, DMR is good, utility clear, and you can also access cameras if you get a successful pick. Like she snowballs, like League of Legends, right? She snowballs so much. Uh, she's just, Dukebi's really good. So if you're interested in playing Flank Watch at all, right? If you're, if you're interested in playing this role, Start playing to Kevy, dude. Like she's she's amazing. She's a great solo queue character. She's a great comp character. She's just really freaking good. All right, now Finca's in a weird position. Sometimes you'll see Finca in a competitive environment just for like a particular uh kind of kind of rush strat. So very pocket T pockety? Is that an adverb I can use? Po pocket esque. Pocket like. <laughs> um you know, like like Especially with the scope stuff, I think the spear, I'm kind of interested to see, I'm interested to see how the spear would be um, with a scope attached to it. But you guys pretty much know how Finca plays. Like you bring her for a rush strat, you bring her for like a blitz, hey, we're going to hit Oregon bunker kind of deal. I hesitate to call her a one trick pony because she's not a bad character, right? Like there are situations where it's nice to have a Finca for a particular kind of aggressive play. But that's when you're going to bring her. You're not really going to bring her for anything else. Like, she has that specific role and she fulfills it. And it's cool. Like, I like it. It's fun. Uh, the gun is cool. I like the spear. And the global heal is nice. Being able to pick up yourself from down but not out gives you a little bit more survivability. Being able to pick up other people from down but not out gives everybody more survivability. Um, but yeah, like the health boost. And you're just going to, you know, you're just going to hit, go down a quarter and hope for the best. So nothing like too crazy there, right? Like she doesn't bring like something like super, super nuts to the field. As far as the roam clear is concerned, Lion is definitely up here. I would put him a little bit higher if it weren't for Takebi. Uh, the main thing with Lion is that you need good coordination to get the most out of Lion. And that's why I can't put him like too much higher. However, you know, in a competitive environment, I'd probably put him a little bit higher uh, than what I'm doing here. Like this sort of weird, like ranked competitive hybrid list I'm, I'm doing this time around. Um, but the V308, honestly, an S tier assault rifle. I don't care what anybody says. Like that thing has average rate of fire, which is all like, and I, and I've done the math, right? I've, I've plugged in the math. It has average rate of fire for assault rifles. So it is not, it is not slow firing, right? It is, that's wrong to say, like, if you're going to say it's slow firing, it's not. Um, it has decent fire rate. It doesn't have much recoil. Everything has scopes now, 50 round mag. It kills people in like three shots, like 90% of the time. So his assault rifle is really good. And his 417 is really good, right? Best DMR in the game. And he has a great roam clear and uh, post plant kind of like hold control kind of gadget. You do need a little bit of coordination to get the most out of him, right? You do the call and then you want to make sure that somebody is like swinging them while you go for the lion scan, right? That threat of not being able to move needs to actually mean something. But yeah, lion's pretty good. Maverick, this guy, oh man, like, like I remember, I remember, you know, that like the G2, like that big run back in the day, utility simulator meta. Um, but yeah, I mean, like he has the Oregon attic hit and that's cool. I'm happy for him. But everywhere else, it's like, dude, we can just, we can, you know, we can bring other options to help open the wall. And that's just kind of it, right? Like he doesn't have frag grenades. Um, his gun's really good. I like the M4. I wish they would recycle it. Can we recycle the M4? Please, like, whenever we get around to a new op, I think, um, on attack. Maybe, even, well, defense might be a little OP. But the M4 is really good. He's fun to play in ranked for that reason. Uh, you bring Maverick for that X-Factor kind of, like, hard breach situation where it's like, okay, uh, I can get away with safely, you know, hitting this quarter play here, right? Oregon Attic, the way that that whole hit is constructed is like this big long corridor where you can actually take advantage of the fact uh, that Maverick can make holes in the wall. And then it's a lot more difficult to actually contest that particular kind of hit. Um, but for tons of other situations, it's just kind of like, right? It's kind of tough. Um, he's not as, uh, he's, he's a tuber out counter now, which is, which is kind of neat. And you can also bring him for hatches, but why would you do that when you can just bring secondary EMPs and then get it with Habana? Right, so the advent of secondary EMPs plus the fact that he doesn't have frag grenades really just just took a toll on Mav. 
Nomad's still one of the more dedicated flank watch characters. Hard flank watch, okay? The reason that Nomad gets picked so much is because you have to use an impact to get rid of the air jab when it's at a hard angle. So good example of this, border 90, that east cutoff, you go on border, you air jab off that door. The only way that somebody can go, you know, hit you for the flank, um, assuming you're not holding it anymore, right? Like, let's say you're going into like office or something, you air jab off that door and then they have to impact it, right? Because of the angle, they can't, there's no way for them to shoot it. Okay. So they either have to eat the air jab or use an impact grenade. And both of those situations, right, that does two things, right? That either gives a sound cue that you can react to, or they're a sitting duck when they run into the air jab and eat the air jab. So that guaranteed kind of value, right, of preventing a run out is really, really big. Not to mention, that's also good for outside the building, uh, chalet, good example, that big door run out, that trench run out. Those are also guaranteed preventions. Like, yeah, somebody, if they're super super nuts right i guess they can run out and then maybe hit like the iframe right for the for the for a headshot but it's not going to work most of the time right so guarantees the movement denial guaranteed crowd control denial good guns that's where nomad shines you compare this to gridlock and gridlock is also good uh but gridlock is a three armor so she's not as uh flexible in terms of the actual like positioning department and she doesn't have guaranteed flank watch now that being said gridlock kind of performs a different role than nomad does and i think there are some situations where it's nice to have a gridlock as opposed to a nomad i do like gridlock a little bit more in ranks because i'm lazy and i don't 100% no, uh, you know, the air jab positioning all the time, right? Sometimes the air jab positioning is a little bit tricky. If you don't get it pixel perfect, somebody can can shoot it. And with gridlock, you just kind of, like, you go into the building, you just, you know, you, 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 th you, throw, you throw your spike spillers and then you're good, right? You just kind of throw it at a staircase and you're like, ah, you know, if somebody runs that way, then they'll shoot it and I'll know. A um, little bit more, you know, ranky kind of kind of character, a uh, little bit more self-sufficient, I think, in that regard. Also, her guns are really good. The F90 is a laser beam. Uh, again, everything has scopes now, so that's really nice to have. Uh, she also has smokes to cover the execute. She's great in post plants, and she's great for executes. So late stage of the round, gridlock, super good. Uh, she, either, she either has a shotgun, and I... I, I know I should be knowing this, like I'm the Siege content creator, but I, I think she still has a gun six. So you can either bring that one or the other. Super versatile character is able to do a lot of different things. Good guns, crowd control. Poor Nook. Uh, my girl Nook, you know, she just she just can't catch a break. You know, every time that every time she's supposed to get uh, a buff, she ends up getting a nerf. I don't know why we keep nerfing her. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a hundred percent. I'm gonna keep it a hundred, right? Like I know uh, Ubisoft people watch my videos, guys. If anybody's watching, please, please help my homegirl out. Like she was so good, and then we were just kind of like, ah, you know, it's like we don't, right? Like, um, I get that you know you don't really want to have a vigil on attack for various reasons, but I would like to see a little bit more of like the power fantasy with her, kind of uh, you know take note. Honestly, at this rate, like, just maybe just give her a new gun, you know? I don't know how any of the coding for that works. Um, I, I did always find it kind of strange that she only got the FMG9 in terms of the the fully automatic primaries. Um, that being said, you know, she is good for that pocket strat of, like, hey, there's going to be maestro cameras in Bank Garage here. I can do... I can do a hit on the side. I can use the, the camera denial to go through, you know, wait by the money truck and then, you know, go up the ramp. And then if people are paying attention, right, to the sound cues, then they'll never see me coming. Um, but she does require a lot of things to work in order for the gadget to work. And that's kind of what's going on with the C-tier pick. Uh, that's the theme with a lot of these characters. All right. And just like that, you know, we went from one pocket strat to another pocket strat. Hey, you know, Amaru's your girl if you really want to go to the top of the cafe building, like, really fast. Uh, or if you want to go to, you know, the top of the Oregon, uh, the Oregon Big Tower really fast. Um, verticality and, you know, just being able to traverse places and get there quickly is nice to have. I do like the timing ability with her. I do like to coordinate timing hits with her and kind of have her outside for a window. And then you hit from the other side, then Amaru comes in. And then there's like, you know, it's a much more chaotic sort of mix up. Um, but that being said, you know, she is kind of a pocket operator. Her gun is good, right? The G8 is super, super good. 
Um, but she's just like, she's not a super crazy, um, you know, utility character, right? She is just really kind of dedicated for the fragging side of things. And, you know, you can't really have a character that's only for fragging in this game. You kind of need to be able to, you know, get rid of a, a shield or two along the way. And Amaru just, you know, she can't, she can't really do that. Up next is Callie, and, uh, ugh, you know, like, I hate having to put her here every time, because, like, I love playing Callie. Like, I always like playing the sniper character in FPS games, and the gadget is actually really good. Like, the gadget is good. She gets a ton of charges. She can blow up deployables, bulletproofs from a distance. It's nice. She, she just has a lot of utility clear, and I think that's really, really cool. Um, but, you know, she is limited to the sniper, and that is, you know, that that kind of pigeonholes her into that sort of thing, right? That's just kind of what she does. At the same time, I don't know if you can get away with giving her an assault rifle, because if you gave her an assault rifle, she might honestly end up, like, here. Um, so it's tough, right? Like, she has her pocket thing, which she is good at, wall denial, holding from a distance. Given the circumstances, if they work, she can't combo the same way Thatcher can, right? She can't combo with the with the Habanas or the Thermites um, as effectively because, you know, she does damage, or I'm sorry, the Aces or the or the Habanas because she does damage, right? So it's kind of like, and, um, you know, you have to make sure that everything is kind of set up correctly. And also, you know, she, she can't really deal with Kate as effectively, right? Because of the radius. So it's tough. I do like Callie. I, she's fun to play. Um, but when you get down to the nitty gritty, there's a reason she's not played in comp. Another operator that got a pretty severe hit was Yana. Um, but at the same time, she is, you know, free drones. And she's not, like, quite up here anymore. Um, she's free drones. She has decent weapons. Still a pretty solid entry fragger. I can see use case scenarios for her, especially when you're talking about uh, one of the actual main, like, competitive aspects of why... Yana was brought a lot of the time was Aruni Gates. Uh, you can burn the Aruni Gates with the drone thing, with the clone. Um, you get two drones in addition to the free intel that you get with the clone. And that's, you know, that's never going to be a bad thing in a game like Siege. Uh, as much information as you can get is always going to be nice to have, especially in a ranked environment where, you know, you, you just really need that, right? There's going to be a lot of situations where you can just get you can get the advantage on somebody who's making a really risky play just because you had information on them and they can't do it anymore. Um, but she doesn't really have the same kind of oomph that she used to, which is why she's not up here anymore. Next up to nobody's surprise, Ace. I mean, like yeah, like he got a little he got a little slap. He got a little slap with a nerf bat, and uh, like it didn't really do a whole lot, right? Because the main thing that makes Ace so good is that he has an AK-12, right? On top of being um, it's not mainly the AK-12, but it is nice to have an AK-12, and you are the best hard breacher. So you're the best hard breacher, and you have an AK-12. It's pretty, like, okay, what's, what's going on here? Um, you can throw the ace charges from a distance, you can splay them out across the wall, which isn't gonna get them bandit tricked. I mean, every three months, right, I'm gonna make, you know, new Rainbow Six Siege patch drops, ace is still S-tier, right? Like, this is just, that's just how it's gonna be. Um, like the guy, he, he has guaranteed wall denial in a lot of situations without any risk to him and a good gun. Like, come on, you know, what else is there to say? The guy is just super good. He's always going to be good until they change that. Next up is Zero, and, uh, some people are going to be happy with this one. I, uh, you know, he's B tier. Um, this is a ranked and competitive tier list, right? It's not like a super competitively focused tier list as, uh, as I used to make these things. Um, so for that reason, right, we're going to look at this guy and go, okay, look, um, you know, free info, always good. You get multiple cameras. You can go for aggressive, uh, in information gathering clears really nice on big open sites like bank, uh, big open maps. I should say big open maps like bank, big open maps like chalet, where there's just like a, like a giant, like FU sized kind of room. And you can throw some cameras to cover a bunch of different crosses. Um, and you can shoot them from outside the building, which is something that I really like. I really, really like uh, and enjoy about zero plus the ability to shoot the cameras from a distance. Uh, yeah, shoot cameras from a distance, deny info and gather info. Really, really cool. Pretty self-sufficient character. Gone six. SC three thousand K is like the best AR in the game. One of the best, I should say. At least, at least S tier uh, in terms of assault rifles for attackers, especially. Um, 
But when we're talking about the actual coordination game, you know, when we're getting into like super competitive environments, it's kind of, eh, you know, like we can just bring a drone, right? So you kind of you kind of get trade-offs here. Um, you are, you know, you're bringing additional cameras, but if your five stack is just super freaking coordinated and you're playing like a competitive team, you know, you're probably not going to need him as much. Um, but for situations where you do want to kind of lean on your gun a little bit and you want to play more self-sufficiently, I, I can see an argument to be made for... Sam, and if I'm talking about him in a ranked context, I think I should be a little bit easier on him. I usually do rank him down here just because, you know, I was really, like, gun-ho about the whole competitive competitive analysis. But I'm just kind of, I'm kind of over that. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I play the game for fun now, and yeah, I'm, I'm cool with putting him a little bit higher. Next up, we got Flores. So Flores is going to be able to get rid of as much utility as you can if you do have a utility-heavy setup. Uh, let's say you got, you know, you have an idea of where the Fenrir mines are going to be, for instance, right? Uh, if it's inconvenient for you to deal with them, right, uh, you can send in Flores there and you're pretty much, you're pretty much golden. Uh, the common case I see in terms of Flores getting used, Oregon bunker hits, right? You're going to have that elbow extension with the barbed wire, with the shield, and Flores is just, you know, he's good for that. He's area denial and destruction. So you can clear off the Shiko position, like that Shiko door swing. You can get rid of Miras, uh, or soft Miras, I, I should say. It's a little bit more difficult to, to get rid of them when they're on a hard ball. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can deal with like the occasional, um, you know, soft like crouch Mira. If people still do that, I still do it. I, people think I'm crazy when I do it. Um, but yeah, like like shields, bulletproof cameras, barbed wire. Just you know, he he's the guy that you bring to get rid of the shield, and he has good guns. He's just, he's good, right? Like, you're going to be able to deal with gadgetry in a way that other characters can't. Next up is Osa. People are starting to finally stop sleeping on Osa. Uh, I've been there from the jump, okay? All right, so if anybody tells you different, I've been, I've been going to bat for my homegirl since day one. Look, Osa is just the, she's the Overwatch character, right? She puts up a shield. Um, Nighthaven Labs, that big open wall. You get the wall open, you get a shield, you have the cog now, right, on the on the Thermite gun, and you just sit in the back, and then if people try to, like, peek from the rafters, right, if they try to, like, run up the, uh, the warehouse stairs towards the rafters and then try to, you know, cut off towards the actual, like, site hit, they can't do that, right, because you're just, you're chilling in the back with that shield. And she's really, really good at defensive angle holding you get into the position that you need and then you set up the shield and then you're pretty much like you're just set um she also has pocket emps to help open the wall which is massive right because she's going to be staying where she's going to be most of the time and she's a makeshift monty right she can pick up the shield and then she can go in and then gather intel for you so she does so many different things in the, in the back line and she's not as like big in terms of like a competitive player just because you know you need like other things you need a much more aggressive kind of clearing sort of strat you need a little bit more flexibility than that but in ranked i, I love playing osa in ranked next up is sends all right sends is a bit of a pocket operator they've always kind of been a pocket operator look if you can get the if you can get the lineup going that's great you know you you have a particular thing in mind you, you know exactly how it's going to bounce i i've come up with strats with sends before I like making send strats. I think that if you are a giant freaking nerd and you're willing to, you know, go into a custom game and actually do the thing, then you can probably get something out of sends. And then if you get in ranked, people are going to be like, "Why the heck are you bringing sends?" And then probably get mad when you when you win with a send strat, right? Because they're just nobody is prepared for sends unless they bring a warden, because uh, because they don't really get picked. Um, you know, the gun is good, but it's still kind of weird. I, I Last time I used the POF-9, I forget if they fixed the recoil on that gun. I think they have. I think it is, like, pretty decent now. 50-round um, mag, high rate of fire, low recoil. Assuming low recoil. You know, that would be the nice thing to have. Aside from that, uh, they do have the 417, which is the best DMR in the game. And they do have a GON-6, and they are a 3-speed. So if you want to round out, you know, a little bit of an off strat for like an aggressive hit, throw the senses, cut off the crosses, go for the plant, maybe throw another sense to make it a little bit more difficult for the for the defense to do the retake. Pretty solid operator if you can get that going. But a lot of things have to happen, a lot of coordination. It's just it's just really difficult to do. And that's the only reason sense is like picked low. 
Grim, I was kind of disappointed to not see as much Grim uh, at the Invitational this time around. I really thought, you know, people were, were going to be doing some like 5 million IQ stuff with him. That's not to say that they weren't, but I did kind of want to see him actually kind of like get up here in terms of the uh, the pick rate. And that's not what really ended up happening. Um, his gun is good, right? The commando is super good. And I do like the ability to go below with the verticality with the bailiff. There's a, lots of different things and lots of uh, different approaches he can take in terms of clearing people, and I do like that, but there are, you, you do kind of have to get a couple of things happening. There's lots of what ifs, like can you get in the position to get the bailiff underneath and then shoot the, the B canister from below? Are you going to get cut off from a roamer? Are people going to anticipate you going to that particular uh, position? And then how are you going to get back to help out your team? Right? There's just a, a lot of different things that have to uh, that have to happen in order for, for that uh, one in a million shot to take place. However, when it does take place, it, it is pretty nice to have. And I think in low coordination environments like in ranked, where you can get away with a little bit more risk taking. Grim is really good. Uh, and he's not a bad operator by any stretch of the imagination. He's just, you know, he might. It, it takes a little bit more to get out, of, get usage out of him than I think uh, Capital for most instances. Not all the time, but, you know, for a lot of instances. Brava, my homegirl. I love Brava. I've been playing her since she came out. Um, the cameras is, is, is crazy. I love the cameras. Um, and she's also, she does a, a million different things, all completely by herself. So one thing that I really do like about Brava is the ability to not only deny information, but also to gather information at the same time. So again, those the cameras that I'm thinking of, right? I always bring Brava for this particular use case scenario. Chalet, Night Haven, Bank. So those big open rooms, the lobby, the actual like main door for, for Clubhouse, or I'm sorry, I keep I keep getting chalet and clubhouse mixed up. Um, too much coffee. I'm I'm hyper. Um, chalet, that big open room by main door, and then night haven, that storage area where you have the uh, the little walk-in closet on the side. Those big areas with the, with the staircase cut off and the camera that you can access there. If you can brava cam those, not only do you take you you deny that huge camera, that huge default, but you also gain information for yourself. So I think that's really the most slept on aspect about Brava is that given the right circumstances, she is an incredible intel ca uh, intel character. Um, another thing that she serves really well as as a my is as a maestro counter. Um, anytime I, I give a maestro strat, you know, I, I mentioned like, hey, you can put this here, you can put this there, and people are like, oh, Brava has entered the chat, <laughs> right? And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, she's a counter, right? That's that's how that works. Um, and so if you if you don't shoot the drones right on the on the maestro camera before they reach you, you know, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how easy it is to to get a Brava drone in there with before anybody notices it. Um, not as good for wall denial as Twitch, right? Twitch is a little bit higher because of the ability to get rid of the claws and the batteries from a distance. But I do like, you know, Brava's, uh, Brava is a chaos op, right? Like she can get in there and she can, she can cause a lot of problems. And she also gathers information and she has multiple drones and she has good guns. Next up, Ram. Uh, dude, I, I wish Ram was a little bit higher. You know, I, I, I really wish. Um, she didn't really get that, uh, pick that much an invite, which was kind of a bummer. Um, I did think that there were going to be a lot more, um, I, I did kind of want to see her become more of a mainstay pick just because she has so many cool, uh, kit mix-ups, right? Like she has a shotgun, she has a ton of verticality, she has the R4C. Um, I, I think it's just kind of tough, right? Because she's a three armor, like she's so dedicated as a support character, but if you made her a two speed, she'd be kind of broken. So it's weird. Um, you know, there, she's really good for Chalet because there's so much verticality on that map and she can do it from a distance safely, which is nice as well. That's kind of an added bonus. Um, you know, she, she's good when you just want to get like a ton of vertical super, super quickly. Um, you know, you throw a bunch of the boogie cars all over the place and then you get the vertical that you need and it's autonomous and you don't have to worry about getting a buck or a sledge right on top of it. But for really specific vertical, it's a lot tougher. So that's why she doesn't really get the same kind of pick rate as Buck. Um, buck is just, you know, much more actionable and, and much better at that particular kind of problem. Ram is a little bit more clunky. So, you know, that being said, um, she, she's, a, she's a fun operator to play. Uh, she's great and ranked, um, and she's also hot. So I think we should put her up here just for, I'm not, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but aside from that, uh, you know, uh, she's good. I just, I wish that she had a little bit more pizzazz, um, but she does require a lot of coordination in order to get the most out of her. All right, next up, Deimos, the creme de la creme. All right, the reason you're watching the video. Um, look, 
there's a million things that kind of have to that have to happen for him to work. But the reason that I'm not putting him down here, a lot of people are like, this guy sucks. This guy stinks. Um, I don't think he stinks. I think the reason that he doesn't stink is because he gets guaranteed he gets guaranteed info, and anybody who gets guaranteed info in, in Rainbow Six is, is is automatically just like not here. Um, well, you know, I, I say as I point to Grim, but it's not guaranteed, right? It's not guaranteed info. You know, Grim, some things have to happen. With Demo, some things have to, uh, some things don't have to happen, right? Um, people can run into a mute jammer if they do have a mute jammer, um, but you get three pings on anybody that you want, and you can call it out. Um, so you do need a little bit of, you do need a little bit of coordination, and I'm not gonna lie, right? With the gun, um, I was of the opinion that I was like, dude, the gun is so crazy, oh my gosh. Like, how, how the hell is this guy, like, they definitely gotta nerf the, uh, the Han Solo blaster. But if you really think about it, um, it only has six shots, which is, you know, you do have to make those count. And, like, the scope is nice, it's not, but it's not really a scope, right? It's just a sight. You don't get any, like, actual magnification on the, on the revolver. So... It's kind of like, uh, okay, right? Like, you are kind of putting yourself in in a, in a tiny, tiny, tiny like gunfight disadvantage, right? If you take that duel, um, and you have to you have to connect. Whereas with the defense, they can just kind of spray into you with a with a thirty round ACOG. So th there are situations where he's going to be a huge, huge pain in the butt when he gets the scan off. But a lot of the time, you can kind of just just run away back to sight with the mute jammer. He's he he is a presence operator, right? Like his presence on the board uh, mitigates certain kinds of behaviors from the defense, and that's kind of what ends up happening. Like it's not one of those situations where you know you're going to see his usefulness. 100% of the time. Like, the fact that he is there is going to have certain kinds of outcomes um, if you observe them in different kind of controlled environments, but you're not really going to see it 100% of the time, if that makes sense. Um, he has good guns, he has frag grenades, and he's a good info, uh, you know, intel gathering character, and he's good for the aggressive roam clear, but he does have a lot of uh, downsides, and that's why he's not up here. And, uh, and also, he's hot, so, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I did... <laughs> We're just, okay, don't worry about it. All right, but that is my Operation Deadly Omen tier list. Let me know. Uh, let me know which rankings you absolutely disagree with, and you are unsubscribing right now in the comments down below. Uh, thank you so much. I, I love all of you, and this was a fun video. I had fun making it, and I hope you had fun watching it, and maybe you learned a thing or two. So keep in touch. Uh, stay around for the top five attackers in Operation Deadly Omen, which is coming out to a theater near you pretty soon, okay? Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good day. Deuces.